One of the biggest issues with Web3 adoption is security. Smart contracts tend to be quite leaky and they tend to have a lot of security vulnerabilities. So function types essentially allow us to establish security measures for the particular functions that we are trying to execute within our smart contract. Now, back in August 10th, 2021, Poly Network was hacked for $611 million. Their smart contract had its own security vulnerabilities that were exploited. This is just one example of what happens when smart contracts have security vulnerabilities that bypass the auditing procedures. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the four different function types that are supported by Solidity. Internal, external, private, and public functions. But before we get into the video, go ahead and hit that like button as well as that subscribe button if you can appreciate this content. Also, hit that push notification bell to get all my videos as soon as they come out. So, let's hop right into it. Alright, so before we start talking about what exactly function types are, let's go ahead and talk about functions first. Now, I know this is very basic very fundamental, but it's very important to solidify the fundamentals. So generally speaking, a function is basically any group of code that can be reused anywhere within your program. So this can save you a lot of memory and it basically decreases the runtime of your program. So essentially with the help of functions, a program can be sort of compartmentalized into small components so that you can understand and manage the code better. Now in Solidity, a function is defined by the keyword function first, which is then followed by any arbitrary name that you wanna to give to your function. It's customary to come up with a name for your function that is somewhat associated with the function of your particular function. I hope that's not too confusing, but you know, if I wanna create a function called sum, then I'm assuming that this function is going to sum something up, sum two numbers up, sum two integers up. Okay, so very basic, but just want to go ahead and establish what a function is before we jump into function types. All right, so let's go over the four function types in restrictive order. All right, so number one is going to be the most restrictive and number four is going to be the function type with the least amount of restrictions. So this will help you generate an idea of when creating your smart contract, the levels of restrictiveness, how much security you wanna enforce or ensure in that particular function, all right? So first off, let's talk about private. A private keyword can only call the function from inside the contract, all right? So this essentially allows contract creators to create functions that cannot be manipulated by external forces. Now this is very important because this avoids situations in which functions are called from other contracts with malicious intent. So next is gonna be the internal function type, and this is slightly less restrictive than the private. All right, now internal functions are still limited to being called from within the smart contract, but they can also be called from smart contracts that are inherited by that smart contract. All right, so they are a little bit less restrictive than private, but they are still somewhat restrictive. Now next up is gonna be the external function type, which only permits that the function be called from outside of the contract. So for external functions, the compiler doesn't need to allow internal calls. And so it allows arguments to be read directly from call data, saving the copying step. Now, if you don't know what call data is, go ahead and hit this link and it'll take you to a video in which I go over the different storage types that are supported by Solidity, which one of them is call data. So essentially, you're going to see performance benefits within your smart contract with the external function type. Anytime that you're calling a function externally, and or calling in large arrays of data. Now, lastly, let's go ahead and talk about public. Now, obviously the public function type is the one with the least amount of restrictions. And basically public function types can not only call the function from outside of the smart contract, but also from within the smart contract. Now I must say a good rule of thumb when developing your smart contract is to give as little power to any entity as possible. All right, so calling this public function, you kind of want to minimize it as much as possible, all right? Because essentially you're giving power to other entities to call this function when you declare it public. Therefore, when you're developing your smart contract and you're trying to decide what function type you want to use for a particular function, it is best to start at the top of the ladder, which is private, and move your way down all the way to public, all right? The most newbie mistake that you could probably make is to go vice versa and start off by declaring your function public and then 
increasing its strictness. All right. You want to start off as strict as possible. And if you can't make the function work properly for your smart contract with the level of restrictiveness relatively high, then you want to go ahead and start moving down on the ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and create a contract and we're going to use this contract to get a better understanding of the different function types. So I'm going to name my contract FT for function types, creating my first function and I'm going to call it add and I'm going to give it no parameters. Now, first I'm going to go ahead and declare this function public. Next, I'm going to put pure. And for those of you that don't know the difference between pure, payable and view, these are different characteristics associated with our functions that are supported by Solidity. And like I said, if you don't understand this or you don't have a good grasp of these three different function characteristics, go ahead and hit this link and it'll take you to a video where I go more in depth on what these function characteristics are. All right, but for now, we're gonna to stick to the four function types and we are gonna be returning an unsigned integer. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare my variables for this function. I'm gonna set an unsigned integer X is gonna be equal to, I don't know, just a random number, 32. Then I'm gonna make another unsigned integer and I'm gonna denote it Y and it's gonna be equal to, say, I don't know, 25. All right, and then I'm gonna make my last variable, which is also going to be an unsigned integer. And this integer is going to be the sum of X plus Y. Now, lastly, I want to put my return statement and it's going to be the square root of our sum. Now, obviously Remix doesn't know what we mean by square root. So let's go ahead and create a function called square root. And the parameter for this function is going to be an unsigned integer number. Now, I'm also going to be declaring this function public as well as pure, just like the last function. And it is going to be returning another unsigned integer. Now, this number is going to be equal to num. And this is how we denote to the power of two with insolidity. OK, and then. I'm going to be returning my num. So that's it for this contract, guys. That's all we're gonna need to really understand and get a grasp of what function types are. We just have the three variables that we have up here, and then we defined a function known as square root, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this contract. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and execute my add function. Notice we get a result of 3,249, which is essentially the square root of the sum of 32 plus 25. So 32 plus 25, you're looking at 55, 57. 57 squared should be 3,249. Let me just go ahead and make sure that that's correct. What do we say, 57 times 57 is gonna be 3249, just like how we got here. And the other function that we have is the square root function. So I could go ahead and just put two here and I should get back four. So this function literally only serves as a square root function. All right, so we can put four, it should be 16, five should be 25 and you get the picture. All right, so what is the purpose of us creating this very simple smart contract? Well, we want to see the differences in the function types. So let's go ahead and we already defined what a public function type is. We said that a public function is essentially the part of the function interface that can be called internally or basically from anywhere. So let's go ahead and change public to private. As a matter of fact, let's keep this one public and Sorry, let's keep this one private and this one public and we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and redeploy our contract. All right, everything came out successful and boom, as you can see, you could only see one function, which is this add function. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. I do get 3249 once again, but notice how I do not see the square root function and that is because I set it to private. If you are the smart contract developer, you wanna make sure that if there's a function that you would like to hide from external people, you could go ahead and use this private function type. So next, let's go ahead and look at the internal function type. Now, internal functions can only be accessed from within the current contract 
or from contracts derived from your current contract. All right, so they cannot be accessed externally. Now, since they are not exposed to the outside through the contracts ABI, they can take parameters of internal types like storages and mappings. Now we can get a better understanding of what internal functions are by actually examining what external functions are. All right, so basically contrary to internal functions, external functions are part of the contract interface. All right, so they can be called from other contracts. Now, as you can see, I'm running into an error. Notice how it says undeclared identifier square root is not or not yet visible at this point. Okay, and that is because I cannot call an external function internally or else I will receive an error. Okay, so if I go ahead and switch this back to internal, you'll see that everything flows smoothly. So just a quick recap of what we learned in this video. Remember that Solidity supports four different function types, which are public, private, internal as well as external. These function types essentially allow a developer to ensure the security of their smart contract by dictating how strict the function is when it is executed. Selecting the proper function type can mean the difference between whether or not your smart contract gets hacked. So that's all I have for this video. Once again, if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get all my content as soon as it comes out. Also, leave any comments in the comment section that you have about function types, as well as any questions that you have about function types, or any suggestions on any topics that you would like for me to cover about smart contract development. I'll see you in the next video.